Several technologies exist to connect electronic components. In this video, I want to add a nearly forgotten technique of the 1970s and 80s. It is called wire wrapping and is a simple and reliable method to connect our projects. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Our projects consist of parts and modules which have to be connected according to our wiring diagram. Mostly we use PCBs for that and it became much cheaper and easier to get those done. But for prototypes and one-time project it is still not my preferred choice because it needs time to get them fabricated and usually I make mistakes and have to correct a few connections or parts. In video number 231, I showed how I wire my projects. Then two viewers mentioned wire wrapping as an alternative technology. I knew this technology from the 80s when I worked in a lab and in the computer industry. Back then, incredibly complicated computers were built using this technique. We did not have multi-layered PCBs and therefore had to invent another way of connecting thousands of pins reliably. Wire wrapping was not only used for prototypes, but also in products which sold in one hundreds or even thousands like the PDP-8 computers. By the way, during the research for this video I found this drawing of the whole Internet of 1977. It was a little bit smaller than today, and you see that this wire wrapped stuff was omnipresent back then. But what is it and how does it work? We use isolated thin wires, usually 30 AWG, to connect pins. But we do not solder these cables to the pins, we wrap them around the pins using a tool. This has many advantages. It is much more reliable than DuPont connectors. As with DuPont cables, we use isolated wires and therefore can create multi-layered designs. You easily can connect more than one wire to a pin. This is not possible with DuPont cables and hard if you solder thin wires directly to the pins. The connections can easily be removed. This is not so comfortable with soldering. There are no fumes like with soldering. The connection is excellent because we have no solder in between the pin and the cable and the connected surface is bigger than with soldering. How is it done? We need three things. Pins with a certain length, an isolated wire wrapping cable. In the early days we used the same color for all wires on a board. So I was happy when I found this spool with different colors. And you need a tool to wrap the wires around the pins. Fortunately, even if this technology is nearly forgotten, we still can purchase these things on AliExpress. After cutting the wire to the needed length, we have to remove the isolation on both sides. I use my trusted best tool for that purpose because it can do 30 AWG wires. I would not recommend pliers for that job because you must avoid hurting the metal, otherwise it will break. Now we insert the wire into the tool, push it over the pin, hold the wire with one finger and turn the tool for a few turns. Ready is a reliable connection. Now we can do the same with the second end of the cable and so on and so on. The wrapping tool has this shape, a round hole for the pin and a channel on the side for the wire. Please insert the wire into the channel. If we want to remove a connection, we use the other side of the tool. This side is shorter and does not have a channel. We push it over the pin with the wire we want to remove and start to turn in the opposite direction. Shortly after, the cable is loose and we can easily remove it. I would not connect it to a new place. I suggest to remove the whole wire and replace it with a new one. That's all you need to know, but there are a few additional tricks I can show to you. For example, these pin headers which come with the D1 mini boards are ideal because you can connect many wires to one pin. 
you just solder the two opposite pins to your prototype board to keep them in place. Now you can plug in modules or through-hole components. You even can use SMD parts if you use these PCBs. Or you can solder a transistor or a voltage regulator on the board and use the excess length of the pins to wrap wires to it. Or, for quick and dirty hacks, you wrap the parts together on the fly. If you want to know more, I leave a link to a video of Bill Hurd in the description. He shows boards from long time ago and also some automatic tools which were used back then. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.